When you were 10 years old, what were you doing? You were probably outside riding your bike or playing with friends or building forts, you know, doing hopscotch, something like that. You probably weren't taking over the family business and dreaming up ways it could change your community. Welcome to Business with Purpose. I'm your host, Molly Stillman of Still Being Molly, and this show is all about bringing you the stories behind the brands, companies, and small businesses that are changing the world. Each week, I interview an entrepreneur, a CEO, nonprofit director, community leader, or just an amazing person who's trying to make a positive impact, not only through their personal life, but with their professional career. My goal is to show you that no matter what you do for a living, you can make an impact right where you are. My guest this week is Donovan Alexander Watson, aka Alex, the owner and CEO of Perkins Orchard, the largest and oldest fruit stand in Durham, North Carolina. Now, even if you are not local to North Carolina, you are going to love this episode. Alex joined me live here in the studio and we had the best conversation. I seriously can't say enough good things about Alex and Perkins Orchard. Now, if you follow me on social media, you know I talk about Perkins Orchard all the time. It's just down the street from my house, and my family and I shop there multiple times a week. Okay, there have been times where I've actually shopped there multiple times in a day. It's also not unheard of for me to run over to Perkins to buy like a single tomato because we are grilling burgers and need a tomato or a single avocado because I need to make guacamole. There are such things as a guacamole emergency, okay? (laughs) Anyway, back to what I was saying. Alex's story of how he has taken Perkins Orchard from a tiny little honor system fruit stand that his grandfather built nearly 50 years ago to the huge business that it is today. It's absolutely incredible. And by the way, Alex is only 25. So if you're doing the math, yeah, he took it over at the age of 10. Trust me, this is truly an amazing episode. You're going to be so encouraged and inspired. You're going to laugh. Oh, it's so great. So without further ado, on to my conversation with Alex. Donovan Alexander Watson, I'm so excited to have you in my studio today. Thank you. Thank you. It is a pleasure to be here this morning. (laughs) So I have lived in Durham five years and... We live right next door to Perkins Orchard. And I remember the first time I drove down that gravel driveway and I was like, I don't know where I'm going. I (laughs) may never return. But then I discovered Perkins Orchard. And the first time I met you, I was like, this kid is awesome. And you really were a kid because you just turned 25, Mm -hmm. which is crazy. Mm -hmm. I remember when I found out how old old you were at the time, I was like, I'm sorry, what? So you were only (laughs) 20 years old when I met you. And to just see that all that you have done, and we're going to get into all of that, um, it just, you epitomize what it means to run a business with purpose. And so even though you're local to me, and so I am very um, selfish in that I'm like, I want everybody here in Durham to go to Perkins Orchard. Maybe maybe that's not selfish. That's not the right word. Um, (laughs) But for the people that are listening that are not near to Durham, I'm just hoping that someday when they eventually make their way to Durham, they're going to come. Because they will. Because they, they will. They will. Because Durham's awesome. Durham's Durham awesome. awesome. Durham is awesome. <laughs> it's the center of the world. <laughs> it really is. It really is. Um, the only thing I don't like about Durham is that it has Duke, but we know. Ah, but, oh, oh, yeah. Go Tar Heels tonight. I know. Go Tar <laughs> Yeah. So we're recording this on the day of the first Carolina Duke game. And uh, what's your prediction? Carolina. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. Come so we're recording this. This is going to air like during March Madness, so <laughs> it's fine. Um, President Obama's going to be there. It's it's a big deal. So um, it's only like a mild ra- mild rivalry. My mild rivalry. <laughs> yes, right. I can't say right. that. Um, and you know, but what's your prediction on the over under of how many times the announcers tonight talk about the fact that Duke and Carolina are eight miles apart? They're going to talk about it a lot. Like forty five times. <laughs> forty five times. Every at time. Least. Like every year, I'm like, oh, really? It's tobacco road. Are they? Are they eight miles apart? I had no idea. I had no idea. Anyway. (laughs) They're going to make it known. I know. They're going to make it known. Everybody's going to know. Okay. So Perkins Orchard, um, I want you to give us what I'm going to call the Donovan 101, but, and I'm going to call you Alex. So here's another funny story (laughs) is, so when I first met you, you introduced yourself to me as Alex and then all of a sudden people started calling you Donnie, Donovan. And I was like, wait. All these aliases. Is that, (laughs) what's his name? So then finally one day I was like, okay, is your name Alex or Donovan? You were like, well, Donovan's like more of my bit, like business name Mm -hmm. and like my but people close to me call me Alex and I was like all right sweet you introduced yourself as Alex to me Alex is the guy you want to hang out with on the weekend yeah exactly so hey and we're just hanging out here in the studio okay so anyway so for the people that are listening and they're like who is this guy 
Who is Perkins Orchard? I want you to give me the Perkins 101 spiel because right. you are you give the spiel and it is the best spiel in the entire world. So well, tell me all about well, it. I appreciate that, Molly. And thank you again, first and foremost, for having me on this yeah, morning. Of course. Um, well, Perkins Orchard is a business started by my grandfather back in 1970 here in Durham, North Carolina. It was just a roadside produce market in the front driveway. And from a child, I took over the family business when I was just 10 years old in 2004 and built it up season after season. Uh, Dr. Perkins, my grandfather, uh, like I said, he started that business. He also had a church in Apex, and uh, it was called the Apex First Baptist Church. I did not know that. Yes, he pastored that church for 44 years. That's awesome. And uh, within that church, he started a divinity college. And at the time, he was juggling the new college, the church he was pastoring, and then the fruit stand he had in the front driveway. Yeah. So he was just going to let the fruit stand go. And I said, no, Grandfather, I got it. I can take over daily operations. So that I did. I and, took, and let's clarify how yeah. old you were. I was at the 10 time. years old. You were 10, I was 10 years, years old. old. At that time at 10 in 2004, I was making the list as far as what oh we needed in inventory. I would, he would sign the checks. I would fill them out. Um, and, you know, I would help customers unload the truck, do my homework at the end of the day, <laughs> and just repeat. And I just developed a vision for the place over time throughout grade school. And so in 2007, uh, three years later, when I was 13, I got my official tax ID. And then I started signing my own checks for the business. Yeah. And then slowly integrated myself into it. Because at at the time, you know, it's all I ever knew. So I just wanted to make the most of it. And never could I have envisioned where that place is today. We yeah. uh, we tore down the original fruit stand from the front of the house, the driveway, and we moved it to about three acres of land behind the house. And it is just marvelous. We did that expansion in 2013. Yeah. And ever since then, we've just been adding on, adding on, adding on. But So for people, like real quick, so mm-hmm. paint a picture. For the people that are not local and they don't know what this looks like, yes. describe... So it's on Barbie Road here in the heart of South Durham. Um, describe what the roadside for produce stand looked like. And then now kind of I, I, at the beginning, I alluded to the driving down the gravel driveway. Yeah, so, um, so what does it look like? Absolutely, Molly. It's not the most formal setup in the sense that we were kind of there first, you know, not to kind of toot own horn or anything. No, yeah. But, you know, the community has built up around us and the city had grandfathered us in. And at the time we had um, had an agreement to where we could still operate the business, expand the business, but if we did not reopen after our off season, then the grandfather clause would lapse. Hmm. So that clause actually went away when coincidentally I decided to tear down the roadside stand, Um, you know, like a wooden structure roof, Three shelves, uh, about thirty feet long, huge, and Just it was an honor like one system. One of those, like, yeah, yeah it's an honor it system. It was an honor system. You put your money through the slot in the door and go about your day, and uh, that trust was really instilled in the community, and nobody really wanted, to, quote unquote, steal from the pastor. So yeah, they tried no, to do the right thing. Nobody you know, is stealing from Dr. Perkins, or you know, mm-hmm. leave an mm-hmm. IOU or something. But <laughs> you know, we tore down that fruit stand in 2013 and just moved it to a wooded area behind the house. It was a landlocked, and we. Uh, put in a road originally where the fruit stand was on the driveway connecting from Barbie down past behind the house and uh, just each and every season it's just been building it up it's it's a wooden outdoor market so you've got roofs you've got areas for you to chill out and enjoy yourselves um, all in all we've accumulated over 300 farmers in 12 states mm-hmm. my grandfather kind of had some of these farmers was kind of built upon them over the past 10 years and then integrating a point of sale system in square it allowed the business to then accept credit and debit cards further expanding the ground of which we were originally operating as the honor system yeah. and so that allowed diversity as far as our community and our clientele coming by and not being so you know singleton as far as just second cash yeah and so that in turn uh, led me to track animals Analytics, which has tremendously grown the business and tailored these 300 farmers' fields to exactly what we sell. So essentially, as I say, they don't grow the whole alphabet hoping we buy every letter. Yeah. <laughs> they only grow exactly what the business will sell and ultimately yeah. what I'll buy as a wholesale buyer. Yeah. But uh, we're, we're just really excited to kick off our 49th season, hopefully uh, by March that and, is unreal. Uh, it's just amazing. I, it's Like I said, it's all I've ever known, and I just – I. I I, I don't know what else to say yeah. in the sense that I just love it to death. And yeah. I, I would do anything for that business. Yeah. I mean, you're a fi- I mean, 15 years. You're 25 <laughs> years old. Yes. You've been running this business for 15 years. Like, yes. it's just unbelievable to me. And the more I get to know you and the more that I see everything that you do, I'm just like, <laughs> I want everybody to go shop at Perkins and <laughs> I want you. everybody to support Alex. And, um, and, and just, I, I love, like, you, I can hear it in your voice, and I, I can hear it when you give the spiel to new people, because it's my favorite thing when I roll up there, and, like, I see that somebody's new, and I'm right. like, oh, Alex is going to dive into the spiel. It's so good. It's yes. so good. <laughs> Thank and, uh, <laughs> um Because you know your stuff, and you have a passion for it, and it really does just 
emanate from everything that you do. Um, and I love that you just made this point. Like when you did introduce the point of sale system, that really did give you more that analytics of like, okay, what are people buying? What is it that people actually want? Yes. Um, and one thing that I, this is a little known fact that, that I know just from our conversations over the years, is that you have actually helped to keep family farms in business single-handedly because of the produce that you sell. Yes. Talk yes. a little bit about that. Yeah, and that, that makes a big difference. I went to a point when I was 15, 16 years old, farmers, I would write them checks throughout the summertime for the produce they would provide for my business, and they would bless their hearts. They would hold those checks till Christmas, so they would have money to spend for presents and their family because yeah. as they often would say you know you got the blood of your grandfather so your checks is good as gold yeah. so, <laughs> <laughs> so now we've gotten to the point in tracking analytics and the business has tremendous tremendously grown uh, like a crescendo just going up and up and up they no longer hold the checks for two good reasons yeah. but uh, you know it's just a blessing in that you know they are expanding the crops they're growing the land they're growing the crops on and most of these farmers are local you know being born in the business didn't know that this was an agriculture rich state yeah you've got over 49,000 farms across 13 million acres of land and we've yeah. got 200 of them centralized here in North Carolina from our mountain star coast you may have yep. heard the saying we call Murphy to Mania locals yeah. <laughs> uh, and then we've got farmers spread throughout other regions as well we've got direct connections with Chiquita though the Monte Welches and Sunkiss, which yeah. are basically brand names of farm uh, companies who have multiple farmers in different regions like Arizona, California, Washington State, and so forth. And then the luxury of having an international airport 15 minutes away, we get the stuff flowing in overnight. Yeah, so just yeah. Pick it up. Well, that was going to say, that's actually another really good point is that, yeah, I mean, you do obviously carry things like avocados and bananas and things yes. that don't grow here in North Carolina. <laughs> um, but that's one of the things that, that you have made very intentional as well is by, yes, like some of them might have Chiquita things on them, but mm -hmm. like you're still supporting a small farm that just happens to partner with Chiquita. Yes. And how did you go about even finding out that it, that existed and all of that? The North Carolina Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services, they will do <laughs> anything to make sure the product <laughs> is in your hands. So we actually split the brokerage costs with the state of North Carolina farmers market. So we get the stuff flowing in and That's I'll spill amazing. like a truck or spill it like a flight full of stuff. So yeah. You just have to put your order in a few days. Yeah. But more often than not, they know what I need. So they'll go ahead and pre-order without yeah. me saying anything. So yeah. it's just a wonderful connection we have with the state farmers market and the guys who work there. Yeah. That's so cool cool. Um, so I want to know a little bit more about the history with your grandfather. Um, yes. and, and one real quick question that I've just always wondered, Talk like to me. since you took this over at the age of 10 and your grandfather, obviously he like, you know, I didn't know that he was a pastor, which is really cool. <laughs> um, and then they started this divinity college, which is incredible. Mm -hmm. Um, but when you said to your grandfather that you wanted to take this over, I mean, you were 10 years old. What did he say? Did he just be like, was he just like, <laughs> All right, grandson. Like, what does he call you? Does he call you Alex? Or Alex, he or he used to call me Bucker Bill. You know, <laughs> Bucker Bill. Bucker Bill. All right, you know. All right Bucker Bill. So uh, that's hilarious. I love it. Grandfathers are always so funny. They are. They're, they they're are. hilarious. What do you call him? Uh, just call him Granddaddy or Daddy. Granddaddy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So okay. So when you said to your grandfather that you want to take it over at the age of ten, right? Ten years old, right? Now, had you been, like, helping out? So did he already sort of knew the ropes? Yes. Like, what did he say yes. when you said so that? So we would – I was growing up in the family, of course, helping out from a child. And, you know, when I was little, as I can remember. And then, like I said, officially kind of helping out the day operations when I was 10 years old. And so every year it would always be – my grandfather saying, well, I'm going to close down a fruit stand this year. I don't know if I'm opening up next year. And it almost became like, I don't know, it's like routine for him to mm. say that. I'm like, oh, you're not going to do that because the next year we end up open. <laughs> so, but it really started to have serious conversations towards that point. So that first year he would take me to the market and stuff more than I would go. He would have that load of produce waiting for me when I got home from school and just had those conversations as to Alex, you really need to make sure you're doing what you got to do to integrate yourself to want to take over this business. And we had serious conversations at a young age. And, yeah. of course, at a young age, I didn't do things like I was supposed to do at times. <laughs> and so there came a year, uh, I think, in between 2004, 2007, where we didn't open up to, like, June. He had mm. already sold, like, four or five of our coolers. And I just knew that was it. So somehow, some way, throughout, throughout the summer, I guess we just had enough people coming by and, when it's hot, you want watermelons, and it's, if that's all you ever knew, <laughs> you yeah. know, you, you kind of want that feeling back. So, yeah, this the farm life, the agriculture life, it never leaves you, no matter who you are. You know, if you're listening to this podcast right now, it never leaves you. You always have that memory of it. So, yeah, I guess that alone kind of drove us to okay, get it, get it back going. And then from there, I said, okay, I can't lose this. I really can't lose this. I yeah. don't want to lose this because, once again, as I mentioned, had we not opened up, 
even in June, we would have lost that grandfather clause, which mm-hmm. would have allowed us to continue to operate in a residential area. Yeah. Like I said, we were one of the first ones there before it was zoned to be anything. Yeah. So that was a special contingency the state and the city made for us. Man, that is so crazy. I love it. <laughs> so talk to me about the history. Like, what your, your grandfather started this 49 years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, what did that look like in the early season why did he want to open up a a produce stand and i just would love i mean i've seen some pictures but i just would love to like really picture what south durham looked like during that time because (laughs) what you have the setup is very unique in which literally all around you are suburban neighborhoods Mm -hmm. but then you have this house that's sitting on the main road but then has like three and a half acres behind it. What, mm-hmm. I think you even said it's like almost five acres in total. When you go, all, yes, yes, it's, it's huge. Once you clear out all the land from end to end, yeah. Yeah, and so he had all that land mm-hmm. in the middle of this very suburban area, but at the time it was not. It was not. It was a dirt road before I could remember. Yeah. But I, from my earliest memories, we had a squash man who lived on the corner, <laughs> uh, right where Irvin Woods is into Barbie. Um Mr. Spates Auto Center, yes, he's on the corner of Barbie and Fayetteville, but we also had a guy next to him who sold pecans and sweet potatoes, and <laughs> it was just a farm road. You know, you had yeah. the Herndons on the end of Barbie. They yep. had their thing going on. So. Yeah. It was, uh, you know, from the stories I've uh, heard, you know, he had a couple tomato boxes on the side of the road to start, and uh, then it added some watermelons yeah. and then some shelves. And they formally fabricated uh, some wooden shelves in the middle of an island we have in our driveway, um, which is still there, but the first stand no longer is not. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, he just, you know, had a vision for the place, and it wasn't nothing to make a living off of, per se. It was just something to do for fun. Yeah. Because you know, he had, at the think at the time, over 150 fruit trees around the house, and that's in part how we got our name, Perkins Orchard. Yeah. He planted uh, hundreds uh, of different fruit trees from pecans. We've had blueberry bushes, we had plums. <laughs> um, he recalls the story of buying two dead fig trees from Walmart 40 years ago <laughs> and gave them life again, and now they're <laughs> massive, 40, 50 feet long, or wide rather. And so, uh, yeah, how much of those fruit trees are still in existence on the property? Of those hundreds of trees, we have, I think, at most about 14. Um, But I have an ambitious plan uh, that I put in place last year. I did clear out part of the property line in the middle of uh, the business property and the residential property where the fruit tree orchard originally was to replant um, grafted plum trees. So on our 50th anniversary, we can do U-Picks. Oh, that's awesome. We don't want to step on our peach farmer's uh, toes in South Carolina. Yeah. So I think plums will work out well. Yeah. And that's apples, really of course, cool. really don't grow in the area. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. <laughs> so well, it's lots, lots we're excited for for this new season. Yeah. So he, he, he just started it really as a hobby. I mean, was it something mm-hmm. that he just really wanted to do to kind of bless the community? Or was, did he want to, you know, how did he start partnering with local farmers? Like, I just wonder, you know, where do you pick? Because you, you hear about people. They, they start a garden or I had a um, uh, my friend Natasha who um, on the podcast back in February who she is starting like an urban farm on the south side of Chicago. Nice. And so you hear about things like that. Yes. But then this is just such a unique idea. And especially thinking about the fact that this is 49 years ago. Right. Um, what you know, how did he begin those partnerships? Well, um, I, I, I think he really sought them out through the state farmers market. Um, yeah. I think. He, I know for sure that he used to frequent the old farmer's market, which I don't even know where it was. It was in Raleigh somewhere, but it yeah. wasn't where the current market is on Centennial Drive off of Lake Wheeler Road. Um, but from there, he just started networking yeah. um, and connecting with the farmers. Yeah. And um, like I said, I guess that was his getaway, if you will, yeah. from, you know, pastoring and coming home and tending yeah. to the garden and tending to the fruit trees. Yeah. And then, you know, like I said, it was just a blessing for me to be in the right place at the right time because it's still in his blood. He loves to do it, but you yeah. know, physically being eighty six now, yeah, he just, he just can't. <laughs> yeah, so. and so that's another thing. He's still he's still alive. Yeah, he's, he's still, still kicking. kicking. <laughs> um, and one of the fun stories that I have heard that I would love for you to share is that he sits in the house pretty. So, oh, yeah. so he sits in the house. Like, so the house for those that don't haven't seen it, it's at the top of this hill, and then you kind of drive down this gravel driveway right by the house. And I learned this year that he sits in the house pretty much all day and he watches the cars mm-hmm. that go down the driveway and he guesses the gross sales for the day <laughs> and then you said that he's almost always he's right almost spot on every time <laughs> almost spot on it, it blows my mind <laughs> it blows my mind i mean especially on weekends because uh, he does go to the uh, divinity college he has now on weekdays from monday through thursday but friday saturday sunday or when he comes home in the evenings from um being the president of his college 
he can spot on guess the gross revenue amount most days uh, when I've had um, really, really busy days. I'm like, how do you do this? How do you know? How, what's, <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't really share anything <laughs> with him uh, prior to him telling me. And of course, you know, he lives the business through me. So you know, I'm an open book to him. Yeah. And, um, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. I mean, I love that. It's just so amazing. I love that man to death. I know. Um, I want to meet him. I've never met him. I really want to meet him because he's just, I, I love, okay, so I, I've said this before, like, I love what I call seasoned people, people in <laughs> yes, a seasoned yes. part of life. Like, I can listen to a seasoned person talk all day long. Like, I've joked with my husband, like, I want to start a podcast and just interview seasoned people and have them tell stories about their lives because they've seen stuff they Mm -hmm. just i respect people who are in that that stage of life who have been through it all um and especially like your grandfather like thinking about the fact that like he's starting this thing this is post-civil rights era this is like during a time in durham where like things are just changing rapidly Mm -hmm. he's seen the change of it being from this farm community Mm -hmm. to now it's this bustling metropolis He's seen it. He yeah. has seen it. Um, and he's lived some life. And yes. I, I love it. <laughs> Thank you. I think Thank it's you. amazing. I try to live every day through him. Man. Yeah. I soak up any wisdom <laughs> I can. You know? Seriously. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Um, but really, I love that. Just picturing him sitting there watching, <laughs> counting the cars. And I just, that's amazing. Thank you. Yes. I kid you not. I kid you not. And then uh, someday he'll give me uh, before the end of the day, before the day started, he'll just tell me, oh, are you going to do th- this amount today? Are you going to do this amount tomorrow? And sure enough, come close to it. And then <laughs> before I even come in the living room, you know, um, I'm, you know, I'm getting my numbers together for the end of the day. And I go in the living room and see my grandfather and grandma and I let them know what I did. And then he said, hot dog, what did I tell you <laughs> <laughs> to my grandma? <laughs> so, <laughs> it's just it's just it's just amazing. I bet he it's cracks amazing. you up. He does. He makes yeah. me. He makes everybody laugh. He's always got something funny to say. So, you know, he could be on his deathbed. He's still gonna have one last joke for everybody to laugh about. So, bless his heart. I'm so sorry to break from this amazing conversation with Alex, but I wanted to take a moment to thank our sponsor of the show, and that is the Root Collective. Now, the Root Collective, as you know, is no stranger to the show, as Bethany Tran, who is the founder and owner of TRC, is one of my dearest friends, and was a guest really early on. I have been a huge fan and supporter of the Root Collective for years, and you can pretty much always catch me wearing their amazing shoes. I'm actually wearing my vanilla Espe booties right now. (laughs) Why? Why are they my favorite shoes? Because they are the most complimented pair of shoes I own. And those compliments lead to a story about how my shoes are ethically made, empowering communities, and investing in change through job creation. Visit stillbeingmolly.com slash TRC and use the code PURPOSE20 for 20 percent off your order. Now back to my chat with Alex. Now, another thing that I think is really incredible is that not only do you partner with 300 farmers, mm-hmm. you yourself do a lot, <laughs> if not like most of the actual picking up of these items. Yeah. Like you, I think you just never not work. Um, <laughs> I don't know how you do it. I mean, I know people are like, I don't know how you do it all. No, yeah. I really don't know how you do it all. Yeah. Because if you're like if I'm stopping by and I'm picking up something and you're there, mm-hmm. you're there, mm-hmm. and then you're always there. But then if you're not there, I'll talk to, like, Mike or somebody, and he's like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, he's driving out in South Carolina <laughs> to go pick more peaches. I'm like, wait, yeah. what? And then it'll be like, oh, yeah, he just left uh, for Florida to go get more oranges. I'm like, mm-hmm. wait, what? He's driving to Florida? <laughs> but you do it all the time. Yeah, so I talk do. about that. Yeah, so I find a thrill in it. Uh, it. It is a fact that I do get most of my produce from farmers we meet up in Raleigh. We get deliveries from 16-wheelers and 18-wheelers often uh, as well. But I got an 8-foot Dodge truck, and that's what we've been using for the longest time. I uh, just recently got a new one about 10 years ago now. And <clears throat> it's, it's, it's something in my blood that makes me want to wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning <laughs> to go meet my farmers yeah. uh, before the sun comes up. Yeah. It is just something about it that I love. And it's the camaraderie. It's something that only they and you can understand in a sense that, you know, nobody else would really be doing this, you know? No. Um, And that kind of drive and passion is what you have to have to run a type of business like this. You can't just get anybody off the street to run the business. Yeah. You know, it's just something, like I said, that I've I've always known. Uh, Once again, being around my grandfather growing up, a lot of these farmers I've known all my life. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they look at me as like, you know, their son in a lot of ways. And, you know, doing business with them is just just very, very, it's just a pleasure to do. And waking up in the morning and getting that produce in part because I don't want to sit in that 830 traffic going yeah, back and forth, oh yeah. you know, past RDU, uh, up and down I-40. 
you know, any rush hour traffic, 8, 30, 9 o'clock, a.m., Ugh, wherever you are. It's, it's brutal. Pretty, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. just avoiding that and uh, meeting them and getting back to my store. And I always try to have the first hour of day to myself, no matter what. That way I can get my thoughts together, yeah. you know, do what I have to do if it's, you know, a physical job needs to be done. But just to allow that, that way I can be my best self for anybody I inter- inter- yeah. interact with uh, throughout the day. Um, but... Uh, Doing that and uh, taking road trips, I call it my vacation, if you will, but, you know, I'll <laughs> often go two, three-hour trips in the mountains, pick up apples, cr- pick up Christmas trees, and I can sit at a little getaway, even though I'm still, I guess, working yeah. in other eyes. Yeah. Um, but it's just, what it, I love it to death, and I just wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't I don't look at you know, the monetary anything first. You know, I literally, this is all I've ever done, so I do what needs to be done, make sure it's done the right way. Talk to my clientele, and at the end of the day, it falls into place. Yeah. It really does fall into place. What are some of the lessons you've learned over the years? Like in 15 years of doing this, since it, at the age of 25, here you are. You're far more mature than I was at 25. <laughs> Cause, um, you know, and just all that you have done in 15 years. Like what are some of the lessons you've learned from farmers? Like just working with them over the years? I mean, there's so many great analogies and metaphors to be learned from through just gardening and farming um but what are some of the biggest lessons you have learned biggest lessons um some of them have been financial lessons um others have been in terms of inventory with the produce you know as a child I used to make everything just look so pretty on the fruit stand and now <laughs> actually you know cycle the produce out and you know make sure it's put out you know and cycle the way it should be and with these farms, you know, it's just a lot of, uh, like I said, camaraderie and conversations around the produce and around the customer's needs, consumer needs. If something comes up in the news, like a romaine lettuce recall or something like that, you know, we're, we're quick to talk about it, quick to, you know, make sure that that didn't get to our customers. And, yeah. You know, we're just always on it. And um, I just I just love it to death. Yeah. I love it to death. Yeah. What is... Okay, so you do, obviously, it's a produce stand, so you mm-hmm. have a lot of produce. What would you say is by far, number one, by and large, your most popular product year-round? Or, or hmm. year-in and year-out? So uh, you can't go wrong with watermelons. I was going to say. They're in our logo. Uh, we go through tens of thousands of watermelons every year, and we have a rare yellow and rare orange watermelon as well. They we are part ourselves. delicious. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, growing those here in North Carolina, and really you can't find them anywhere else because of the time frame they take to grow. So that novelty and uniqueness in itself is what drives people to the store. Yeah. Uh, our top five uh, sellers I would have to list to you, they would just uh, be watermelons, peaches, cantaloupes, Christmas trees, and jar goods. We have a plethora of jar goods from jams, jelly, cider, syrups, honey, hot sauces. And y'all make all of that. Yes, we do. We do. Yeah. And then we also have a co-packer on the coast who helps out with our ciders as far as our strawberry, blueberry, uh, grape ciders. The cherry peach. cider is... And cherry cider, too. <laughs> Mwah, it Thank is so you. good. So I had never had the cherry cider. And this year, at, before y'all closed, like I literally mm-hmm. showed up to Perkins. And so, the, so you guys closed at 2 o'clock on mm-hmm. Christmas Eve. I showed up at 1.40. And sure I was did. like, I was like, I need to. <laughs> I spent like $200 on stuff because I was like, I need to stock up she before you guys up. close for the up. season. And um, I bought, but I bought like, you know, obviously the apple cider is really good. But your cherry, I had never tried the cherry cider. So I was like, oh, I'll just get a jug of this. I was so mad that I only bought one. I was so mad at myself. <laughs> <laughs> because I was like, this is delicious, and there's no sugar added. Yeah, so you're yeah. like, it's basically fresh, salad. Fresh on the fruit. Mm-hmm. It's basically salad. What I'm drinking. <laughs> Let me just tell you, mm. Molly Mm-mm. is a great customer. <laughs> very supportive. Very, very. Supportive. And you also have uh, amazing sorbet that's Thank no you. sugar added, Thank which you. is unbelievable. It's so coming out some last night. <laughs> I know. I saw on your uh, on your stories. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah, you were making some sorbet, but yeah, you guys have popsicles. You have. Uh, um, Funnel cakes. You yes, guys added we do funnel, funnel cakes, cakes and candy apples. Oh, you know, so try to make it a state fair without the rides. So, uh, you know. Yeah, <laughs> but then you also started partnering with some local meat farmers. Yeah, so you have yeah. meat farmers come out and sell their Very meat. Very popular guy in Ian McGimney uh, out of Hurdle Mills. Uh, he actually coincidentally is the guy who grows the rare orange and yellow watermelon. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, he does. So, oh, look at um, Ian. Yeah, yeah I've got I'm to talk to him too. He's, yes, he's a good guy. <laughs> he is. And so uh, he does have heritage breed farm raised pork um, that he raises in Hurdle Mills. And all they eat is beer grains from a local brewery, 
Uh, they got some grains, corn grains, and produce. We, I, I make it my mission to any scraps or any bad produce, or I wouldn't even say bad, you know, just something that I, we may have had for a little while longer, got a new shipment in. I just want to give it to the pigs because as we say, and which is true, that flavor comes out through the pork. It does. It really does. No antibiotics, hormones, dyes. It's the best meat money can buy. It really and so is. So I, I really vouch for my farmer, Ian, because uh, I remember just two years ago, he was coming to me about the whole meat thing. I said, Ian, I don't know about that, man. You should just probably stick to produce and I'll be the first one to tell you that I am wrong about that. He, I'm proud of Ian. He is awesome. For and not listening to me at the time. I will say, <laughs> no joke. And this is, I'm not, this is not lip service. Y'all, his bacon is on good. point. It's really good. It is the best. I'm sorry if y'all are vegan or vegetarian, more bacon for me. It is <laughs> right. so good. Oh my gosh. His right. bacon is amazing. Um, but yeah, I, 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 when I learned that about that, you guys even give him some of the the scraps to feed to the pigs. Oh, absolutely! And that flavor really does come out. Does. Like you'll you'll get some of that pork shoulder, that pulled mm-hmm. pork. Oh my gosh! Yes, and he's got it all. St. Louis bear ribs. He got so uh, mouth ta- sauces, chorizo. He's got oh yeah, his chorizo pack. is really oh, good. It's really good. Oh yeah, you do some like huevos rancheros. Get some mm-hmm. get some chorizo on that bad boy. Get some homemade <laughs> salsa. Mm-mm. You're good to go. We are good if, to go. If you're, if you're local or you're <laughs> planning to come by uh, Durham, North Carolina, if you're listening internationally, come on by and see yeah. us come March the rest of the year. Yeah. I'm telling you, he's got some good stuff. And uh, we just try to create that synergy by having him on the site of the produce market on certain days. Yeah. So that way folks can come out and enjoy themselves. And we not only just host in in terms of meat, but we have other vendors to come out to. Yeah. The Secret Baker with uh, Sweet Goods. And we have local artists and craft vendors who come out to uh, one lady even came out. She had poop spray. So um, <laughs> I had a uh, guy had dog treats, you know, even the newest line of dog treats with CBD. And so, you know, like I said, we just try to create that uh, that synergy out yeah. there for sure. I mean, for it's sure. amazing just in the five years since we've lived in Durham. I mean, you guys were you guys would usually close like in October and then mm-hmm. open back up in April. Yes. And now you guys are closing on Christmas Day yes. or Christmas Eve. Mm-hmm. And then now you're opening, opening way, m- earlier. way earlier. Yes. So, so when did that change? The off season is getting shorter and shorter. I have to have off season just to simply oh, rest. Yeah. And things don't tend to grow that well, obviously, in the winter. And then the access to them can be a little difficult. And then once again, people just don't want to come outside when it's cold and wet and yeah. dreary. And so um, in 2015, my customers really, really pressed me to sell Christmas trees. And I said, no way, Jose. Yeah. But I would do what was needed to look into it for the following season. And that I did. I kept my word. So in 2016 was our first year selling Christmas trees. Yeah. And I referenced that only to say we would normally close up November 1st. As soon as pu- Halloween's over, pumpkins, busy time of year, we're done. Yeah. And so because it's a little lull uh, in November, you know, between the holidays of uh, – Halloween and Christmas, you know, Thanksgiving, you know, you get a few customers here and there for vegetables, but your main things in between are your pumpkins and your Christmas trees. So we started selling Christmas trees in 2016. Uh, I think we sold uh, maybe about 93 or so. And then in 2017 was our second year. I think we sold about 150, 160. Um, And then 2018, Last year, uh, we sold a record 615 Christmas trees. Oh, it was out! It was just out of this world. Oh I, my god! I took a big risk about 10 days before Christmas and going back to Sparta, North Carolina, Allegheny County, to pick up an additional 300 trees. Just packed the the Enterprise truck full. Yeah, the 16 foot truck. And uh, sure enough, uh, we we sold out Christmas Eve. Uh, we had our last sale at two o five after the two o'clock closing. The guy called and said, "Hey, I got I need a Christmas tree. I think we had like seven left." And so it was a blessing. It was truly wow. black. I, I took a risk, you know, and buying that mini Christmas tree, investing the money I'd already made right back in those trees. So wow. it's become pretty lucrative. I like to say we're the only established Christmas store in Durham that's not in some random parking lot. Yeah. So I really try to create an experience for the customers. You know, we've got lights all around yeah, the house. Yeah, y'all fake snow. We know it's actually real snow. Over, it's yeah, real yeah. snow. Yeah, yeah, real we, snow. We make snow. snow uh, I, I think I'm like a little demigod. Yeah. I spent like $4,000 <laughs> on a snow machine because uh, we just can't get enough here in Central North I know, Carolina. Right? I just i am a freak for snow. And then, of course, we get new people moving down here. They look at me like I'm crazy because they're trying to get away from it. Here I, I am know. making it. So. Here <laughs> is. <laughs> but it's a legit a snow, real snow machine, air compressor, air um, uh, water pump. 
And it's got the actual snowmaker. We can make about six inches every eight hours over so, 100 by 50 surface. So and awesome. I remember one day I opened up in the off season um, last January and uh, we just couldn't make any snow because we have to have low humidity, low temperatures below freezing. And we just couldn't make any snow. So I opened up a special day in the off season and I said, no sales will occur. Just come on out, enjoy the snow, hot chocolate. I think the Panthers were playing a playoff game at the time. We had a watch party and everybody enjoyed themselves, even yeah. a little bonfire outside. So I'm, I'm all about stuff like that. Yeah. And I think that's the, the luxury I have in being young and being a business owner that I can I can do things like that and yeah. you know just kind of give back to the community in that respect you know yeah. host something like that and I love it to death yeah and you so, do really have such an impact on the community and that's one of the things that like you always talk about just being an entrepreneur with purpose and like it's yes. not just for you about running this business like you have such a passion for impacting farmers and educating people on why it's important just to shop and support local farmers absolutely and what you know the economic impact of supporting a business like Perkins Orchard and um just the impact that you have on the community and educating people on what it looks like to be able to shop and eat real food absolutely and to your point there you know business with purpose that is my purpose in Perkins Orchard is to create that unique experience something that sets me apart from your grocery store where you yeah. of course you could get some of the same things we sell but there is truly a difference in that where it comes from and then also the produce that you may get from the grocery store unfortunately it sits in cold circulated air mm -hmm. all day and night yeah whereas the produce we sell is not only continuously rotated but it's sitting outside where it grows so to its benefit your peaches will get sweet your tomatoes will get ripe and juicy yep. and, and flavorful and your watermelons will get sweet as sugar as we say yeah and so uh just having that outdoor atmosphere and that kind of turnaround faster than what we often see in most grocery stores it just creates a fresh product and a product that sets us um, yeah. you know uniquely uh, apart from you know your chain grocery stores or sprouts they just open yeah. up you know uh, not long ago and our sales for the first day they opened dipped about 65 percent mm. and maybe about 45 the next day but after two days they just went back up yeah you know, I guess we had to fill it out and see yeah um, but that's that's truly truly what I um, pride myself on educating people you know you don't know unless you ask you know so yeah. I, I often like to if you don't ask you know still tell you about the product you know you got to know your product if you're going to sell it, as I say yeah and uh just generally educating folks you know because it's, it's a lot more than what meets the eye especially no, with produce. for sure for sure and I will say like this is not again not just lip service but it, and I guess it is goes to you know just say what you were saying about like when it sits outside but like I have never in my life had a more delicious cantaloupe, more delicious peaches, more delicious apples, or more delicious watermelons than the ones that you sell. Like, I was like, does he Thank inject you. them with something <laughs> that is like, but no lie. Like, if I buy a cantaloupe at the store, so say y'all are out of cantaloupes, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I really need a cantaloupe for something. I go to the store and I buy one. Mm -hmm. It's fine. But the ones that I get from you, like, they melt <laughs> in your mouth. Like, you take a bite and it just dissolves. Sweet and you're like, sugar. oh my gosh, this and is I, so good. And I kid some of my farmers, like, y'all at nighttime just pour sugar in the field. Like, or, seriously. You know? <laughs> Honestly, it's so good. Same with the peaches. Like yes. the peaches y'all get. Yes, we have about 50 variety of peaches we carry from, I say, starting around May, lasting through about September, October. And we get about two different varieties every week, uh, white flesh, yellow flesh. So and the, they start off clean free, then semi-clean. And what I mean when I say that is when the flesh doesn't attach to the pit of the peach where you can easily separate it and enjoy it without, you know, having a chop chop away at it with a knife but um with these different varieties it just it's just mind-blowing yeah it's my, we get our peaches out of mcbee south carolina off the us one yeah and y'all also have like what how many different types of apples this year we maxed out at 42 42 yeah, different 42 types of apples. varieties of apples yeah. i didn't even know there were that many i was like there's <laughs> granny smith and red right like and yellow and golden delicious <laughs> Yeah, That's as many as I get my hands on. I'm like 42 <laughs> different kinds of apples. Yes. I didn't even need the yeah. furthest I drove to pick up some apples was from Pennsylvania. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I didn't know that. And we get apples as furthest away from Washington State, flown in. Wow. And the newest variety apple we had this year was called the opal apple. Opal, opal. apple. Mm -hmm. Now what is that? It's <laughs> very. I still got some in the fridge at the store. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very crisp apple. Um, it has natural rustling on the top, uh, kind of like what you would see from a golden delicious apple. Uh, very luscious. It's a crunchy apple. It's pretty, oh, good. It's pretty right. good. Every apple has its unique undertone. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. <laughs> Every year I always will like, so he'll have, he, he has what's called this, uh, like the peck bag deal. Mm -hmm. So you get, you get this bag and you can fill it with whatever you want for $20. And um, I love to just like, I will put 
all these different kinds of apples in it and I make homemade applesauce with it. Nice. And when you combine like all the different flavors of that mm-hmm. applesauce or of those apples, apples it comes out. I literally don't add anything to it. People don't believe me. Natural sweetness. I just peel them mm-hmm. and then I boil them and then they just mash up and it's like you don't even because people are like, oh, do you add sugar, honey? I'm like, you don't need to. <laughs> you don't need to. Like sometimes I'll add cinnamon mm-hmm. or like a little bit of lemon yeah. or something like that. Yeah, but yeah. I'm like, you don't need to. It's They're just good. Oh, so good. So peaches and apples and tomatoes. I mean, we have a, a wide variety of produce. And like you said, some things just simply can't grow in North Carolina. Yeah. So, you know, we have to get them from other places. But we're going to make sure that more often than that, it is organic. It's coming from a trusted farmer. Yeah. And that we can get it in a, in a timely manner so that it won't be on a transport truck long right. as it is on my shelf. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a really important fact. Um, now, there is also another little thing that I know about you. Do you <laughs> still have a dream of becoming a meteorologist? I do. I do. <laughs> and, you know, it was uh, it was a dream come true in a way that um, this past December I had Bill Ray. He came by yeah. and bought a Christmas tree. That's and awesome. And he featured uh, my snow machine on uh, one of his newscasts before he did the weather. So That's I awesome. I thought that was like serendipity. You there. were just like, uh, you were in heaven. Full, that was. That was. Yeah. It was full circle. But, yeah, I do have um, dreams to become a meteorologist. I used to have a weather blog. Um, I would get an AccuWeather meteorologist, Frank Strait, uh, to submit videos to my website. I would send weather alerts to over 100 people, peers in high school. Kind of oh had gosh. to stop that because my grades were slipping. <laughs> um, but people were like, where's my weather alert, Donnie? Where's my weather <laughs> alert? I would consciously send them out before bed in the morning. I just love to do it. And yeah. in North Carolina, the funnest type of weather, most fun type of weather to track is snow. Because mm. you have to have the right ingredients in this area to basically have a snowfall. Because we're so close to the Atlantic, we got warm air coming aloft, and the humidity can be too high at times. And you know, you just gotta have the right factors. So letting people know and not having so much credibility as somebody on TV, I can just kind of let all the <laughs> data flow, you know, whatever way it follows, you know. Yeah. So it, it was it's really fun, and I I still one day hope to, yeah. if not broadcast TV, newspaper, be a meteorologist. Yeah. So. Yeah. So what is your vision for Perkins now? I mean, you guys are about to, like I said, enter your 49th season, Yes. you know, 50th season. You hope to have pick and plums. Yes. <laughs> what is on the horizon for you? Like, I know you have just such a vision because you've carried this business in so many just beyond your wildest dreams from the age of 10 to 25. What do you see for the next 5, 10, 15 years? Well, I'm very humbled at the growth of the business. Um, without people coming into the area, without people like yourself spreading the word, making it known, we would probably still be at the front driveway. Mm-hmm. So I always think about that. It gives me chills. And with tracking the analytics, I can see what's selling, what's not selling, what's the busiest time. So I say that to say October analytically is the busiest time of the season for us. Oh, wow. And to account for that, this past year I did extend the parking lot a little bit. But most recently, we cleared out the rest of our land to encounter the need for parking come the second half of the season. And so once that area kind of dries out in the next few weeks, uh, we hope to go ahead and have that uh, graveled over. We've already got pipes down. Um, I got a carpenter now, like I said, finishing up some expansion work at the store now currently. Yeah. And then we're going to start working on that piece of land as far as making it one where you can not only park, but just sit down and enjoy yourself, walk across a little drawbridge. Yeah. Uh, we created a uh, river back there now, <laughs> you oh know, get into a part of the property. Uh, Molly, I can't wait for you to come back and see everything. I can't wait. I um, can't wait. But, you know, I just, we're almost maxed out in terms of space, but I have a vision that has come to me. It stayed with me. And I've been seeing signs, but I really, really have a goal open a brick and mortar here in Durham, uh, awesome. like a farm to uh, table restaurant that features your local meat through our farmer, Ian McGimney. And it's like I already have access to the produce. So, yeah. You know, just creating that business model set around those two things. That is what my goal is that's in the next awesome. two to three years. That is awesome. I'm excited. Oh, man, that's going to be so cool. I can't wait to see I'm excited. It. Alex, this has been so much fun. Um, but before we go, yeah. we have to do what's one of my favorite parts of the show, and that's just to get to know you a little bit more and ask some fun questions. All right, all right. So, and as my listeners also know, this is the portion of the show where my executive producer husband inserts a like movie clip or a sound effect of some kind <laughs> to transition us. I love we it. We never know what it's going to be. I love it's it. It's always a surprise. So, uh, Alex, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Once again, the eyes of the nation have turned here to this tiny village in western Pennsylvania, blah, 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 blah. There is no way that this winter is ever going to end as long as this groundhog keeps seeing his shadow. I don't see any other way out. He's got to be stopped. And I have to stop him.
Uh, they're always random questions. These are not like having anything to do with produce. <laughs> I love it. Um, what animal would be the most terrifying if it could speak? Oh my goodness. <laughs> probably, uh, probably a tiger. <laughs> I would have to say a tiger. And a I love tiger. cats. I got a cat, so <laughs> I don't know. Probably a tiger on that one. <laughs> um, Tony eating my frosted flakes. I guess I don't know. <laughs> Oh man, that's funny. Okay, um, what cheesy song do you have completely memorized? Ooh. <laughs> uh, oh man. <laughs> like, what's a song that, like, every time you hear it, you're like, "Why do I know every word to this?" <laughs> oh man. Oh man. It's probably any any Drake song. <laughs> Ugh, I like Katy Perry <laughs> more than I'm afraid to admit. Okay, so Katy so. Perry's a good answer for that because <laughs> yes. I would not like if I was like I was like I bet Alex probably listens to Katy Perry. No, Absolutely, I would not have yeah. thought that. Yeah, no, that's hilarious. That's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. Um, a little known fact about me is um, one of my like weird hidden talents. Not it's not a hidden talent. It's just a I was dared in high school, um, or not dared, but somebody bet me twenty dollars that I couldn't <laughs> learn all the words to bombs over Baghdad by outcast oh. in an hour. And so I was like, yeah, that that's <laughs> on. So of course I learned them all. And so now to this day, here I am a 33 year old grown woman who can that's a classic. Rap, rap all of bombs over Baghdad. <laughs> I won't do it here on the podcast, but I can do it. It's my party trick. I love um, it. <laughs> so, I love okay. It. If you could only eat one of one piece of produce from your stand for the rest of your life, what would it be? Watermelon. Oh, yeah. Watermelon, mm-hmm. for sure. Yep. Go, get your lipopene, blood circulation, <laughs> get your little fiber in there. I like stay it. Stay hydrated. I like it. Go with watermelon. That's Lots good. Lots of volume. <laughs> that's good. Go uh, that's good. Um, who would you most like to sit next to on a 10-hour flight and why? Barack Obama. Mm. <laughs> President Obama. Yeah. Um, why? Because I want to pick his brain. I want to just talk to him, hear what he has to say. Yeah. Um, very influential person. And um, ask him, I guess, what, if anything, he could or would, I guess, do over yeah. in his presidency. Oh, that's a good question. So, I Given the current climate. Yeah. Essentially, because the way he carried himself. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a great question. Uh, my husband was at a thing like a few years ago. I mean, this is maybe probably three or four years ago. And actually, uh, former President George W. Bush was the, like a surprise speaker. And it was like a closed event, no cameras or anything like that. But he was just this surprise speaker. And nice. somebody sat down and interviewed him. And he, and John said it was just really interesting to hear from a former president who had a controversial pregnan- pre- pregnancy, <laughs> pregnancy, <laughs> presidency at times. Yes. Um, but to just hear from a, pr- a guy who's just a guy, he's just a yeah, human. Yeah. And to hear like, here's what he wish he'd done differently. And here's what he wish he, he's glad he did the way he did it. And like, here's why he made this decision at the time, because it was the information that he was given. He said it was just really interesting to kind of hear from a president as a human mm-hmm. and not as president. Exactly. And exactly. So I think that I kind would, of perspective, I yeah. would just love to just embody and hear. Just sit down yeah. and like, just have a conversation. Like, exactly. Oh. Exactly. Because, you know, somebody with so much power and, right. you know, so much entrusted to them, responsibility. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And yeah. then the moral aspect of everything. Too. Yeah. 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 I just started reading Michelle Obama's book, Becoming. Yeah. And um, one of the things I did not know, like, is um, her mom, like, Michelle Obama's mom moved into the White House with them. Yeah. Like, lived with them in the White House for yeah. all eight years. But she never would admit she lived there. She's always like, I'm just I'm just helping out for a yeah, while. But I, she would, would never... I would hear that, yeah. And I thought, <laughs> okay, I didn't know she had a permanent state. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. And uh, also, she refused huh. any security detail. So, like, she would just, like, walk out the side of the, like... So, Michelle Obama's mom's just, like, going to lunch with her friends. And people would be like, are you... Michelle, and she'd be like, "Yeah, I get that a lot. A lot of people say I look like Michelle Obama's mom, oh um, my which I just gosh. think is funny. Anyway, that's, that's awesome. Unrelated, but sort of related. Anyway, yeah, I just yeah, think that's yeah. interesting. Okay, uh, if you could jump into a pool, a pool full of something, what would you want it to be a pool full of? <laughs> Ooh, boy, oh boy, early in the morning. <laughs> I know, <right? laughs> nah. Jump in a pool. Jump in a pool full of. Uh, I know this is a random question. Ooh. See, that's the thing. I can't swim, so it's got to be four <laughs> feet or below. So, uh, what can we fit in a four foot of below pool? <laughs> no, I know, um, right? Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. I love Coca-Cola. Hey, there you go. Drink myself till I die. I know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
get diabetes, it'll be fine. Oh, I'm just kidding. That's I shouldn't say that. Uh, I love that. Though. I love that. I That's love funny. That. Yeah, I know. Okay, and then this is the last question that I ask all of my guests, and that is, what are you most grateful for at this moment? Grateful for friends and family, yeah. people who reach out to me, people who give me the time of day to mm. allow me to give them the time of the day mm. to communicate with. Um, grateful for uh, the life that has that I've been brought up in. You know, yeah. uh, the family who's raised me, um, the resources I've been provided with in life to uh, create my own path. And uh, as my mom say, you know, uh, dance to the beat of my own drum. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's awesome. Alex, this has been so much fun. Thank you so and much Alex, for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure to be here. My awesome. Pleasure. Thank you. And as always, I will have all of Alex's information and the information for Perkins Orchard. So if you are in North Carolina or want to make the drive to come visit, you can come visit Perkins Orchard. And you guys are open March through Christmas Eve. That's correct. Every day in between from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. 9 to 8, seven days a week. That's right. Rain or shine, holiday or not. Rain or shine. So <laughs> come on out. Come visit and support Perkins Orchard. And thank you so much, Alex. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I've been shopping at Perkins Orchard for five years, ever since we moved to Durham, and I'm still blown away by everything Alex has done in building his business and making it what it is today. I loved our conversation, and if you are local, definitely check Perkins Orchard out, and if you're not, hey, it might be worth it for a road trip. As always, I would love to know what you loved about this episode or something that you learned, so let me know on social media. You can find me at Still Being Molly or at Business With Purpose Podcast on Instagram or Facebook, and you can use the hashtag Business With Purpose Podcast. So many of you have been sharing episodes lately, and it gives me so much joy. Thank you so much for doing that. And thank you so much for listening to this week's episode. I hope you loved it. If you're a first-time listener of the show, welcome. You can be sure to visit the archives for past shows featuring amazing entrepreneurs and business owners who are literally changing the world with their businesses. And if you're a regular listener, thank you for tuning in week in and week out. Thank you so much for your support. It really does mean the world to me. So many of you ask me, how can you support me? How can you help? And really, it's two very simple things. One, sharing the show with a friend. Word of mouth is the biggest way to help this show grow. And so by sharing the show with a friend, I appreciate that so much. Or by going over to iTunes and leaving a rating and review. Rating and reviews really just help me to know what you're liking and how the show is personally impacting you. Also, be sure to head on over to iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Overcast, Stitcher, wherever you listen to podcasts and click that subscribe button. By clicking the subscribe button, it helps to make sure you never miss a new episode. As always, this show is edited by my amazing husband and executive producer, John Stillman, with help from Mark Haywood, and the music is by Mark Killian of Third Wheel Media. Thank you so much for listening, and go do something good with purpose on purpose.